Tapasztalatom narciszkócsként az, hogy a pornófüggős és a maszturbálás a narcisztikusok nagy százalékára igaz. Bár a legtöbben ezt nagyon jól tudják titkolni. Van, hogy a feleség vagy a partner ebből semmit sem érzékel, csak mondjuk szembesül azzal, hogy a narcisztikusnak korai magömlése vagy merevedési zavara van. Amikor a pornófüggéssel foglalkoztam, mint kócs, azt tanultam, hogy ráadásul a folyamatos pornó és maszturbálás állandóan magasan tartja a tesztoszteron szintet, amitől hajgyengülés, hajhullás is beállhat. A merevedési zavarok nagy része pedig annak is köszönhető, hogy az erős kézi stimulálás, amit a rendszeres, gyakori és rövid ideig tartó maszturbálással él át a narcisztikus, teljesen eltérő inger, mint egy húsvér vaginában történő szeretkezés, így emiatt éli meg azt, hogy a himbessző felpuhul. A kudarc pedig a szégyen miatti ördögi körhöz vezet. Te hogy látod szem? A pornófüggés, maszturbálás és a szexuális életzavarai között lehet ilyen összefüggés? And not even porn addiction, but just consumption of porn. In the case of porn addiction, these effects are much more emphasized, much stronger, and much more, much more enduring. Take much longer time to get rid of. But even casual exposure to porn, casual exposure to porn, has very worrying psychological outcomes. For example, the ability to be sexually aroused by intimacy or the ability to connect intimacy to sexual arousal um, is severely diminished. Even in teenagers who have been exposed to pornography fewer than three years. So these teenagers have an intimacy deficit. They cannot develop intimacy. Second thing, pornography objectifies the female body and reduces it to body parts. It's all, it also includes a lot of aggression. Even if the sex is consensual, it is still aggressive sex, where the male is, male is super dominant, the female is super submissive, and the male takes the female. So there's an element of implied rape, or ambient rape, if you wish. Um, teenagers come to expect that real life sex will be like this. They, they try to reduce the human, the, the female form. They, try to re, they start to relate only to specific body parts. So the incidence of fetishes has skyrocketed after pornography. And they, they are very violent, very aggressive. Uh, for example, foreplay almost disappeared completely in studies that we conducted starting in the 90s. Foreplay almost disappeared. There is a shocking statistic. Between the year 2008 and 2018, over 10 years, Twenge and Campbell, two scholars in the United States, discovered that teenagers refuse to date. The dating is foreplay. Dating is intimacy. Dating is talking. Dating is getting to know each other, and so on. Uh, teenagers date today 56% less than 10 years ago. 10 years. Such a social trend usually takes hundreds of years. Hundreds of years, literally. Yet within 10 years, essentially, teenagers stop dating. Teenagers in at least two countries where we have studies, like Japan and the United Kingdom, prefer to not be in touch with the opposite sex at all. So in a list of five most important things that you would like to do, there is no, there is nothing to do with the other sex, including not sex. <laughs> these are teenagers, hormonal levels, this, that. And the, the reason is, of course, pornography, absolutely pornography. You see, the, the, the male brain is designed with a glitch, in effect, with a bug. Um, the male brain reacts only to visual cues, nothing else. Women like to believe that men react to their intimacy, their conversation, their company, their presence, their sense of humor, their intelligence, their nothing. 
men react to none of this. Men, the sexual parts in the male brain react exclusively, exclusively to visual cues. End of story. The problem is the brain cannot tell the difference if the visual cue is three-dimensional or two-dimensional. We don't have this software. So when we get a two-dimensional cue, we have sex. And we don't need sex anymore. We've had sex. When we, get, when we watch uh, 3D, uh, when we watch, uh, sorry, a, a porn clip, we have had sex as far as the male goes. And that's that, that's that. he doesn't need sex anymore. He had, he had sex. Because sex for him is a series of visual cues. And he cannot tell the difference between 2D and 3D, which is you. So it's a bug in the male software. And the whole pornography industry is constructed on this glitch, on this uh, misprogramming. Now women are in a terrible situation because they have to escalate to attract the men. With the existence of pornography, women had to escalate. So women began to offer more visual cues, intuitively. They began to offer more visual cues and made themselves visually available at a much earlier stage and without so many conditions. And recently, with no conditions, with zero conditions. So female developed as a as a result of pornography, as a counter to pornography, as a strategy, female developed pornographic availability. The whole real sex, real life sex, became pornographic. And um, what is happening is the, the, the borders, the boundaries between pornography and real life sex have blurred to the point that men feel entitled to demand from women to be porn stars, including from their wives. Or, I mean, why, why won't you do this? I saw it in a movie. You know? And when they don't get what they saw in the movie, they feel frustrated, become aggressive, or outsource, go out of the union, of the relationship. And so, of course, the rates of casual sex absolutely exploded stratospherically. Exploded, absolutely. A typical woman has today four one-night stands a year, and a typical male has six one-night stands a year. Compare it to the 1980s, where a typical woman had two one-night stands in her life. In life. And 50% um, of people have casual sex. Compare it to the statistics in the 1950s, where 2% of people had casual sex. And adultery today has tripled among women, stable among men, by the way. Men are the same, but tripled among women. And it's adultery because women are trying to attract men. It's not adultery, really. They, they simply go out with married men. The women became much less discriminate, so they go out with married men, with uh, older men. With, I mean, there is desperation among women, mostly. Desperation, because the competition is total. It's not that the men will say, oh, I watched a movie, but it's not as good as a real woman. No. His brain is telling him the movie is better than a real woman. Because you have many more options in the movie. I mean, and today we have on demand uh, where you create your own plot, pornographic plot. I mean, and of course, within 10 years, we will have real Android sex dolls, we will have artificial intelligence. In this sense, women are doomed, absolutely doomed. It is not true that women, the, the feminism created a situation where women don't need men. It's exactly the opposite. Men don't need women anymore. I mean, if you read texts in sociology, if you read newspaper opinion pieces, if you read, everywhere you go and read, they say, oh, there is a major revolution. Women don't need men anymore because they have money, they, have, they are independent, they can get sperm from a bank, they don't need men. 
Not true at all. It's exactly the opposite. Men don't need women anymore. Men don't need women anymore because the only thing that a woman could give that was exclusive was her anatomy. All the rest you can get from a man. Friendship, men, intimacy, men. You can get everything from a man, as a man. The only thing you cannot get from a man is the anatomy of a woman. And now, this is free. Don't forget also that pornography used to be a fee-based service. You had, you had to pay subscription. But today, no way. It's totally free. I mean, Pornhub, this, that, you have million, and through social media, and so you have what, what is called reality pornography, or amateur pornography, homemade pornography, where these are real people. You have webcams, streaming webcams. I mean, the offering is infinite. Now, why do women need, uh, need men? Because women and men need each other. But men need women much less than women need men. It's, it's, a, it's a fact of psychology that is taboo. No one talks about it. And so today we see among women very abnormal um, re behaviors and reactions and so on and so forth. And one of them is a marked increase in narcissism and marked increase in autoeroticism and, and very strong avoidant behaviors, schizoid behaviors. In 2016 was the first year in human history that more women had zero contact with men during the whole year than women who had contact. Majority of women in 2016 had zero contact with the men. Zero contact with the men, except the pizza delivery. Zero for the first time in human history. And ever since then, 2016, 17, until today, the trend is increasing. And today, the majority of women never see a man never talk to a man, never sleep with a man, nothing. It's very common to find women who didn't have sex three years, five years, six, seven years, I mean, extremely common. Majority, actually. And about 40% of uh, women uh, don't have children or, or opt not to have children, uh, depending where. But for example, Germany, California, opt not to have children. The children do require a man. So it's a, a man avoidance strategy, in effect male avoidance strategy. Even for IVF, you need a man. And even a sperm bank implies some kind of men. It's like protest against men. They, they don't perpetuate life. They cut off life. Very sick trends are happening. Never before in human history. Human history was horrible. There were genocides. There were wars. There were, but it was human. We're entering a non-human age, post-human age. It's a post-human age. Something really, really, really bad and terrifying is happening. And no one pays attention. We drink coffee. We, you know, we're very happy. The Titanic is drowning. And we're very happy because the orchestra is playing. You know? I am flabbergasted. I see the future. It's dystopian to the max. It's extremely frightening. Extremely. If there is a future if there is a future.